Both resonance and the elementary steps of organic reaction mechanisms can be thought of as involving electron flow from a source to a sink. But at this point, we've seen many times that the electron sources and sinks in organic molecules are well described using natural bond orbitals. And the analogy of electron flow from source to sink in an orbital context is what's known as an orbital interaction. And the essence of an orbital interaction is really overlap between a filled orbital and an empty orbital within a molecule or between molecules. The molecule that I've drawn here is methylamine, which consists of a nitrogen with two hydrogens bound to a CH3 group. And the electron flow shown here shows the conversion of methylamine into a rather non-traditional resonance form in which we've broken one of the sigma bonds in the molecule. There's nothing wrong with this resonance form based on the system we've developed already. It just looks a little bit odd because we've broken a sigma bond. Still, based on the classification scheme we developed earlier to categorize different types of electron flow, we can identify the source here as N, a non-bonding lone pair, and the sink as sigma star, a sigma antibond, since the sigma bond is breaking. These labels, hopefully by now, are very suggestive, and as you may have guessed by now, the labels indicate natural bond orbitals involved in an orbital interaction that corresponds to this electron flow. Curved arrows have physical meaning, and the physical meaning they have is related to these orbital interactions. We can draw a couple of different pictures to depict the interaction that's going on here. One of them is shown for you on the right. What's shown on the right are the shapes of the n and sigma star orbitals that are overlapping to produce this interaction. Here's the source orbital, an sp3 hybrid on nitrogen, and here's the sink orbital, an antibonding orbital associated with the CH bond. Notice that there are a couple of regions here where the two orbitals overlap, and the overlapping is the essence of this orbital interaction. That overlap has important implications for orbital energy as well, and if you're familiar with the LCAOMO, or Linear Combination of Atomic Orbitals to Make Molecular Orbitals approach to build molecular orbitals out of atomic orbitals, you've probably seen this picture already. We can represent the non-bonding lone pair orbital on nitrogen and the sigma antibonding orbital of the CH bond on an orbital energy diagram like this. As we expect, the sigma star orbital is higher in energy than the non-bonding orbital. The interaction between these two orbitals results in a lowering in the energy of the filled orbital. Notice that this is a stabilizing effect since its energy is going down and it's filled, and a raising of the energy of the antibonding orbital. And notice that this too corresponds to a stabilizing effect. The bonding combination corresponds to constructive overlap of the non-bonding lone pair orbital and the sigma star orbital, and the antibonding orbital corresponds to destructive overlap or a subtractive combination between the non-bonding and sigma star orbitals. The extent of this stabilization, how far down this orbital goes and how far up this orbital goes, tells us about the importance of this alternative resonance form. The greater the stabilization, the more important that resonance form. In the case of methylamine, it's not all that important, but this example illustrates the point that we can do this analysis really for any pair of adjacent electron source and sink within a molecule. This is how we apply resonance theory systematically, looking for strong electron sources and strong electron sinks adjacent to one another within molecules, and pushing electrons to show the orbital interactions between the NBOs associated with the strong source and the strong sink. We can also apply the same type of analysis to predict reaction mechanisms, looking for a strong source in the electron donating molecule and a strong sink in the electron accepting molecule and thinking about an orbital interaction between the two to facilitate the transfer of electrons from one molecule to the other. Now that we've been given a taste for the idea that interactions or overlap between NBOs is the essence of resonance, let's look at a couple of more examples. Thioformate contains a good electron source in the form of the negatively charged sulfur atom adjacent to a carbon oxygen pi bond whose pi star orbital is a pretty good electron sink. The resulting resonance structure is shown at right, and it reflects the overlap of the non-bonding lone pair orbital on sulfur and the pi star orbital between carbon and oxygen. We can draw out this situation without ever calculating the natural bond orbitals of the molecule. The pi star orbital has the typical appearance of a pi star orbital, with a much larger lobe on the less electronegative atom, and opposite signs 
on the two atoms. Although we might expect the non-bonding lone pair orbital on the sulfur to be a hybrid, recall that for optimal orbital overlap, this should be a p orbital. And so we can represent the non-bonding lone pair as a p orbital on sulfur, showing the interaction as an arrow from the donor orbital to the acceptor orbital. Here's a picture of the orbital interaction as calculated by the NBO program, and you can see that it mirrors our prediction exactly. The only difference is that the lone pair orbital on sulfur is slightly bigger than the pi star orbital between carbon and oxygen, which we would expect for a third row versus a second row element. So that, to some extent, was us just being a little bit sloppy. Now, one question that we can answer now that we have the actual NBO calculation in front of us is how important is this interaction to the overall structure of the molecule? Is the molecule mostly S minus or is it mostly O minus? That depends to some extent on how stabilizing this interaction is. And if we look at a table that lists the most important interactions in the molecule and the energies associated with them, we can see that the interaction between sulfur's lone pair and the pi star orbital between carbon and oxygen, the BD star 2 indicates a pi star orbital, is very large in comparison to all of the others, 68.7 kilocalories per mole. That's huge stabilization associated with this orbital overlap, and it's telling us that the alternative resonance form is extremely important to the structure of the molecule as a whole. As a second example, one of the cyclic isomers of glucose is characterized by a very interesting orbital interaction between a non-bonding lone pair on the oxygen within the ring and the sigma antibonding orbital for the carbon-oxygen bond shown, shown here. The resulting resonance structure is reminiscent of that methylamine resonance structure that we looked at previously with a carbon-oxygen double bond now, positive charge on oxygen, and negative charge on the oxygen of the CO bond that breaks. Here again, we can draw a picture of the interacting orbitals without ever actually doing an NBO calculation. The fact that we see a non-bonding lone pair acting as the electron source tells us that a non-bonding orbital is going to be associated with that electron source. And this is most likely something like an sp3 hybrid orbital. The adjacent CO bond is engaging its sigma antibonding orbital, which has the typical appearance of a sigma antibonding orbital within any organic molecule. There are large lobes on the outer edges of the bond, and these have opposite phase. I'm going off the screen a little bit with the lobe on oxygen, and there are smaller inner lobes with a node between the nuclei. The interaction here is between the non-bonding orbital on the oxygen and the largest lobe of the sigma antibonding orbital for the CO bond. The glucose model system shown here shows us this orbital interaction based on the results of an actual NBO calculation. O8 is the oxygen within the ring, O6 is the oxygen that's part of the CO bond that breaks, and we can see very clearly here the interaction between the lone pair engaged in resonance, which this calculation actually puts in a bona fide p orbital, and the sigma star orbital of the CO bond. And one point to note about this sigma star orbital that we didn't do a good job of drawing in this picture is that the lobe on carbon is much bigger than the lobe on oxygen. So there's overlap both between the upper lobe of the p orbital with that kind of backside lobe of the sigma star antibonding orbital and between the lower lobe of the p orbital and the internal lobe of the sigma antibonding orbital at carbon. Just how important is this interaction? Well, if we look at this in the table of interactions calculated by the NBO program, we see that this is worth about 18 kilocalories per mole. It's the interaction between a lone pair at oxygen 8 and the sigma antibonding orbital of the CO6 bond. That 18 kilocalories per mole, mole is dwarfing most of these other interactions and speaks to the importance of this interaction in stabilizing the molecule in this arrangement. So although these electron pushing arrows are somewhat non-traditional, the resonance structure is valid and does have considerable importance in explaining the structure of this cyclic isomer of glucose.